Welcome everyone. This is going to be a quick video going into the deployment process for a Active Directory join or traditional legacy AD join scenario migrating to a Azure AD join scenario. Um, this is really considered about changing the trust relationship from on-premise to Azure Active Directory. Um, in my blog, I talk about you know various reasons why. Um, what I wanted to focus on in this video is really the solution. Um, and this is a, a first run for the solution, but the, the way I'm going about um, executing these steps. Now, something very important to keep in mind, um, I've been asked a few times, especially when presenting this recently at an MMS conference, is this a Microsoft supported method for migration? And officially today, Microsoft has responded saying um, they don't officially support um, the migration from Active Directory to Azure Active Directory without a format and reinstall. Though, if you run all these steps individually, they are all individually uh, supported steps the process altogether is not yet fully supported. So if you are looking at running this in enterprise, um, you know, you're doing it, you know, with without Microsoft support, um, but the steps themselves are easy enough that, you know, if you decide to give it a go, um, really there's not a whole lot to it. As you can see here in my task sequence that I have thrown together, um, I'm calling just some very simple task sequence variables domain admin, this can also be a, uh, you know, a domain account with you know, device removal uh, for the uh, domain disjoin step. And this will remove or disable the on-premise object in local Active Directory. The next step is creating a temp user and a temp password. Um, the temp user and temp password are gonna be used for an auto logon account. And we're gonna be setting those a little bit further down. Now, with when this is executed, we uh, we set the task sequence variables, we move on, we suspend BitLocker. So you'll see here that we're just executing a PowerShell command, suspend BitLocker C for reboot of three reboots. And if you see in this task sequence, we have one, two, and three reboots. So when the user signs back in in our final step, um, post user login, um, BitLocker is up and running again. Um, again, if you're um, on-premise environment is not using BitLocker, I mean, obviously just remove the step, no big deal. Uh, this step here goes into creating the local account. We're using a local PowerShell script uh, for this. And, um, oh, wow, well, you'll see right here, um, this create local account, and I have a few other PowerShell scripts in here that are all part of the same source content that is in this package here. So if you download the task sequence from GitHub, um, these will all be in the pack or in the uh, task sequence backup, you know, content, um, but they'll also be on my GitHub if you want to recreate them. The one thing that you know you need to be able to do on your own before you can run this process is recreate the Azure AD join package. Um, you need to make sure that that is created and imported for your environment following the steps on my blog. All right or you know whatever steps you want to use for a provisioning package, but the one on my blog works um, very well. So next, we're setting the auto logon registry. So we're using the temp user, temp password. We're setting those in registry for auto logon and then turning on the auto logon steps. Next, we are disabling uh, privacy during out of box for H key user and H key local machine. This prevents the privacy prompt from popping up on the user's first login, um, holding up the auto logon process. So this just cleans that up so that way we don't run into that problem. Next, we move straight into dsreg cmd forward slash leave. This is the leave of hybrid Azure AD join registration. Um, all that we're really trying to do here is a graceful disjoin from hybrid relationship um, with the object in Azure AD. Um, if you're not a hybrid environment, that's not a big deal. You can disable the step. If the step bombs out, it's not a big deal either. We're just trying to be graceful and clean about it, but it's not the end of the world. Um, this next step is doing a domain join removal. This is pulling in our variables for our domain or device admin, um, and then executing a removal step with a reboot at the very end. So we're gonna kick off a reboot here, and then when we log back in, you'll see it log in with our temp account, copy the provisioning package, which is used to facilitate the 
AD or Azure AD join uh, steps. Then we are going to apply that provisioning package, and that is just a simple PowerShell command here that we're doing install provisioning package, but we're using the force install quite install command so we can do that unattended without any user um, intervention. And then we have a restart command in here, um, an escrow BitLocker keys to Azure Active Directory. And what this is doing is if you are using BitLocker and the keys are escrowed into AD, what this is gonna do is grab all the numeric protectors on the device and save them to the Azure Active Directory computer object in Azure AD. The next step in here is we're gonna copy a user profile script. I created a, just a simple script to uh, copy the user's profile contents from their old folder to their no, new folder, allowing them to select it. Um, very simple, I'll go over it in another blog, but I dump it on the local machine, you'll see it here. Um, and I actually just create the script and stage it. Um, and it's just going into uh, C program data custom scripts. So you'll see it just dumps it in there. Um, next, we are cleaning up the machine after our Azure AD join, and we're removing our provisioning package because that can be used to um, on other machines to join them to Azure Active Directory. So we're removing our provisioning package, which also has our BPRT in it. Um, which we want to keep safe, as well as we are going to be removing the default username, password, and auto um, admin login value, um, resetting those all back to their default values, cleaning that up so that way we're not leaving any traces on the machine. We perform our final reboot, and then we are holding for the user to sign in. Once the user signs in, we do a little kick on OneDrive, and then we remove the temp user account that we created up here. Um, to leave no trace on the machine after the user logs back in. Now, what you'll notice here is that there is no domain migration or I should say user migration step. Um, that's still a touchy topic. There is um, quite a difference between Active Directory user profiles and Azure Active Directory user profiles. Um, and we've, we're just doing, in my scenario, some very simple um, file copy for profile migration after the user signed in and created a new account. There are some third-party tools that I've seen floating around out there that do facilitate migrations from hybrid join or traditional AD environments to Azure AD environments. Definitely worth giving them a look if you decide to do this in a larger enterprise type deployment with uh, hundreds or thousands of devices. So that is the you know our whole task sequence in itself. Um, only takes a couple minutes to run. So what we're gonna do is we'll close this out. We'll jump right into our machine here. And uh, just so that way we're not like, you know, blowing smoke, we can see in here that we are um, 80 joined. We are, so we're connected to an 80 domain, addds.movland.net. Uh, we're joined to uh, Intune um, through hybrid join, and we have co-management running with all of our workloads moved to, um, to Intune. And I've moved most of them over um, just because it's more practical to have them in there. Um, I don't really run many workloads left in SCCM. If you are leaving workloads in SCCM and using this process, um, there shouldn't be any problem in the migration. Just be aware that um, with co-management, you do need workloads in order for those configurations to come down post-deployment. Things like applications, things like configuration, device restrictions, stuff like that for certs and uh, VPN profiles and, and other things. The other thing I'll look at is dsreg cmd forward slash status. Um, and this is a great command. This is what we do to check the device registration status. And you'll see here where Azure AD joined yes and domain joined yes. That means we're in a hybrid state. We have a computer name. We have our device details of how it's registered in Azure Active Directory. We also have our tenant details that come down as part of the device and user registration with all of our endpoints. And then we also have our user state information as well as extremely important, our Azure PRT. Um, and this shows that we do have a valid relationship and Azure uh, SSO is configured with modern auth. Also, our uh, registration of our existing um, 
on-premise um, login. So that way, um, when we connect to SMB shares, those should authenticate um, as um, expected. And you'll see that in when we go through our demo as well. So I can go ahead and close this. And what I want to do at this point is I'm going to move over and check um, or actually kick off the task sequence. All right, let's go into Endpoint Manager, Software Center. We'll launch Software Center and we'll wait for this to come up and then we will look for our application. So we have an application here and you'll see here, uh, MMS Domain Join to Azure AD Join Migration. And we'll just kick that off with an install. Um, we'll wait for that to pull down our extremely large package, which is probably in all about a meg, if not a little bit less than that. And once that kicks off, then we'll see our task sequence variables kick off. Um, we'll, our auto login's been set. BitLocker Suspend is kicking in, uh, creating that local account. Um, oh, once we're creating the local account, then we're setting the auto logon registry um, and we're disabling privacy. DS reg leave and now finally our AD join removal um, is kicking off. The reason we're doing a lot of these steps um, or we do like the BitLocker disable is we don't want BitLocker to trigger from a PCR UEFI um, alert and go into the blue recovery screen while we're doing these reboots and migration. Um, yes, the device will be um, not BitLocker secured for three reboots. So that's just something you need to be aware of. Yes, you could leave BitLocker enabled, um, but the biggest concern is just what's gonna happen during the reboot process. Um, and really the concern of where the keys are until we get into Azure AD. Now, if you built this correctly in your existing environment, those keys should exist in MBAM, SCCM, or at Active Directory. We are re-escrowing those keys to the new environment. Um, or into Azure AD under the computer object. So once that object is migrated, um, you can actually get rid of the existing on-premise environment and keys as well. So you'll see here that our auto logon worked with our temporary account. You can see here that we're applying the provisioning package. The pa provisioning package actually copied in our last step. So the provisioning package is applied and now we're gonna wait a 60 second for reboot typically recommend waiting the 60 seconds for the reboot to kick off. A lot of this is just to wait for the registration to kick off and everything to, to sync up in the background for the Azure AD join. Um, we, we've done this at scale using like 15 second reboot and for the most part it was okay, um, but we found it to be more reliable with a 60 second. Um, you may see Teams pop up here. We have Office installed with Teams. Um, and Teams obviously automatically launches with users. Now, if you're worried about Teams automatically popping up, stuff like that, um, feel free to dump in some registry keys to force that or suppress that. But at this point, we just, you know, just wait for it to reboot. You could probably add a step in the task sequence to just do a wait for 60 seconds and then an immediate reboot. Um, that probably would be a little bit cleaner than just having the restart button there. We're gonna go ahead, reboot. Now we're logging in. Um, and what we expect now is that we are hybrid, at, or I shouldn't say hybrid, uh, we are Azure AD join. Now you don't see the prompt here because auto login is still turned on. But what we're doing is booting into Windows and we're gonna do some cleanup like we said. So we're escrowing the BitLocker key, uh, turning off auto logon, and then removing our provisioning package. Um, the reason we're doing it now is doing it before the user actually has the ability to, um, uh, to clean that up. And then we're doing another reboot. And then at this point, um, we'll see that our registry key was removed for the auto logon, and we should see a prompt for user authentication. <clears throat> All right, so if we click on it here, what we will see uh, when my VM decides to catch up with me, we have the temp account here, which was the last account to log in. It's gonna get removed as soon as I log in with another user. I have other user account, you'll see here, sign in with your worker school account. So we're Azure AD joined, and I'm gonna type in my full UPN, and I am gonna type in my password. <sighs> My user profile will build for the first time using my Azure Active Directory credentials. Um, 
and we'll just wait for this to build out. Now, this is going to look like just a normal logon experience. Um, the cool thing about the way that this is done, now the user I'm using is actually set as a Azure Active Directory local admin, but because we're using a provisioning package, um, the, by default, the user signing in is a standard user. Now, this is different from some of the other steps out there, and many people with the other steps out there are doing um, prompting the user for authentication and going through the authentication process. And by default with that, the user is gonna be a local admin. Um, the cool thing about this is the user is not a local admin, a standard user, and then we can decide whether to make them an admin after the fact. Um, so that means we can kick off the process as a standard user and wrap up the process and they are still a standard user. Um, so now we're logged in with our new user um, in the environment. Um, we'll go into the machine and let's look at computer management. So some of our biggest concerns are, did my, um, was I able to clean up the, the, the tools I used to, um, to build this account, primarily that temporary user account? So as you can see, that temporary user account is gone. All other accounts are disabled. Administrator is still there, um, rolled over. A lot of times we'll add logic in here to disable the local administrator as it's no longer um, critical for Azure AD join. Um, another thing that we'll look at is um, we'll look at the join type. So remember, previously we are AD joined. Um, so we'll go under accounts, access worker school, and you'll see here connected to Movlin's Azure AD. And we're actually connected using my MMS at movlin.net. Um, and then we can go into here and we can see um, our policies are starting to come down. Now, don't worry about like some apps may have failed. Some of those are syncing up. It's going to take one or two syncs um, before everything is in lines. So we typically say like, wait about an hour for everything to sync up certificates, VPN and such. Um, if you're inpatient, you, I mean, obviously can go in here um, and just kick off a sync in settings. And that should bring down things like company portal and stuff like that. Um, all right, and what you can see here is we've synced our device. Our OneDrive policies have kicked in. Um, a couple apps are updating in the background. Company portal is now there. Um, one thing I always look at, so if we go to MMC, um, is let's run MMC. And I wanna look at my machine cert or my user certs and see if those have come in. Um, let's go look at user account. And just for kicks, we'll look at computer account because I'm pushing both to the machine. So if we look at current user certificates, we'll see our MMS um, cert issued to our user from our on-premise Active Directory ADCS. And let's look at the machine cert and we'll see we have a machine cert issued from our on-premise ADCS. That's really cool. Um, with that, we also have auto VPN and it's automatically connected on the device. Um, so if we were off-prem doing this, you know, we would still have connectivity to our resources. Um, but everything else synced up here um, and it works as your user would expect.